Does everybody ever remember this sign, the loser sign? Well, back in the 1990s, uh, uh, right when I was about to graduate high school and going into college, uh, it was very popular, especially in some of the movies and songs that were coming out. Uh, I remember Ace Ventura and him pointing that uh, finger up like this and going, loser, loser. No one wants to be a loser, but unfortunately our world likes to categorize people, usually those that don't have it as good as the rest of us, but God always has seen us very differently, and through Christ uh, this is possible. And today we're looking at a story in the book of Mark uh, about a man that the world considered a loser. In Mark 10, 46, the Bible says this, Then they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. When we meet Jesus, he's leaving Jericho. He is on his way to face the cross, a horrific but necessary sacrifice that would pay for the sins of the world. And as he's heading out of town, we find a beggar, and not just any beggar, a blind beggar, Bartimaeus. Now, not much is known about Bartimaeus. His name is Aramaic, and it literally means the son of the honorable one. So how could he have fallen so far? Well, we really don't know. He could have been born with this blindness. He could have gotten the disease that caused him to go blind. That was very common during those times. He even could have been plagued uh, for some un unknown sin. In any case, we just don't know. Uh, but what we do know, as we look at him, he is an outsider. He is a loser. He had no one to take care of him, so he sat on the side of the road waiting for someone to help him each day. How many of us have felt like that? We may not be blind, but we feel just like that outsider. No real hope in sight. No one really cares. No one takes the time to show compassion. It's a miserable life, and we can feel like real losers. Isaiah 56, 7 says this, These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. At this time in Israel's history, they were outcasts, but yet God made a promise, uh, not just to them, but for all peoples, a prophetic promise that God would take care of the outcast, the loser. So what do losers do? I guess that's the question. One, we cry for help. Back when I was six years old, I was out uh, a playground playing on a jungle gym, and as I was hanging upside down, I, my hand slipped off, eventually one of my legs and during that whole time I was screaming and crying uh, for someone to come but no one ever came and I fell and by the time help came it was too late I was badly injured my femur had snapped uh, I say all this because many times we cry out and we think that no one cares especially when things don't turn out like we think they should Bartimaeus had no idea what would happen when he cried would, would there be any help in Mark 10, 47, the Bible says this, When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
I think the tragedy we find and why so many times we remain as losers is because we think that Jesus will be like those that are around us. They don't come quickly. They take their time. They just don't seem to care. And since uh, we face this every day, we find ourselves thinking that God is the same. But we shouldn't put the attributes of those that let us down upon our Lord. Uh, he is very different. First Peter 5, 7 says this, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. All those that are heavy burdened, it's time to come to Jesus. Cry out to him for mercy. Bartimaeus had nothing. And in the same way, all of us are needing what Bartimaeus needed. We need the mercy of God. Now, not all of us have it as bad as he did, uh, but God does care the same when we cry out to him. If you have blown it with your family, you can cry out to him. If you've gotten yourself in trouble, you can cry out to him. If you're lying in a hospital, uh, you can cry out to him. In your suffering, you can cry out to him and he will hear your plea for mercy. But you have to cry out to the Lord. And this brings me to my second thought is that we want change. We want things to be different. I like this quote by Michael Jordan. Uh, some people want it to happen. Some wish it would happen. Others make it happen. You know, I've seen a lot of sports movies, uh, and a team could want to be different. They could want to play better, but in the end, they have to see that things just ain't going, aren't going right, and, and they got to make the changes necessary to succeed. Bartimaeus wanted things to change. He was determined. Even when the crowds told him to shut up, he still wanted things to be different in his life. Mark 10, 48 says this, Many were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. The devil and this world want to keep you thinking that you're a loser. So we must be determined. I think this takes some self-examination. Are we just going to let our world pass us by while we sit on the side of the road? Or are we going to get up and seek the Lord? Are we going to cry out for his help? I guess you have to. You have noticed it. Uh, life is not going the way you plan. Maybe uh, you have tried doing things your own way and find yourself stuck on the side of the road. Uh, you're empty inside and there seems to be no hope, but God hears our cries. Psalm 6, 9 says this, The Lord has heard my cry for help. The Lord will answer my prayer. I think one of the problems that we have is that we struggle with our own pride. We are the ones telling ourselves, shut up. And the reason we stay losers for so long is that we don't want to ask for help. We don't want God to control our lives. I got to say, look at your life. Look how it has turned out. Even if you got all the things that you ever wanted, uh, you still find that without Christ, uh, your life is empty. Don't live a life of running in circles and accomplishing nothing. Stop spinning your wheels. Time to do something different. Time to trust the Lord. Call out to him like Bartimaeus. And this brings me to my third thought. We need the faith to follow. Uh, there's a TV show uh, called George Lopez, and uh, it's pretty funny because the guy, he always thinks that he has everything under control. And when his wife asks him something or one of his friends asks him to do something, he's like, I got this! Uh, but in reality, he doesn't. Uh, Mark 10, uh, 49 to 52 says this, And Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, stand up, he is calling you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And answering him, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following him on the road. Now, these few verses, we could easily make a whole other lesson. But let's look at a few things really, really quick. One, he jumped. I still remember the first time that uh, I preached. Uh, I was a little bit nervous, and when the pastor called me up, I ran up to the platform. I was excited to do whatever Jesus wanted me to do. And that's exactly the kind of faith that Bartimaeus had. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says this, So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you are really among those God has called and chosen. As a believer, we need to be excited about doing the work of God. When Jesus says jump, we jump. And another thought that I had is that he revered. And I think we need to be reminded that our God is the creator of the universe, the one who holds the whole world and our very lives in his hand. 
When Bartimaeus speaks to the Lord, he uses a very unique term, a very formal term. Now, some translations just have it as rabbi or teacher, but here this term rabbi is used uh, when talking in prayers, Bartimaeus already recognized that Jesus was the Messiah, for he called him the son of David. I believe he knew whom he was speaking to. A uh, loser doesn't realize uh, the one that he's following, or maybe he has just forgotten. I think a lot of times we find ourselves in Loserville when we don't remember that we serve the King of Kings. We have lost respect for our Lord. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 says this, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. We must realize that we follow a worthy God. And that's the last thing that we see about Bartimaeus' faith is that he followed after Jesus. Remember where we first found Bartimaeus? On the side of the road. Now we see a man that is healed. And when Jesus said, your faith has made you well, that word is used for saved. He was saved not just physically, but spiritually. Because immediately afterwards, he followed after Jesus. That's a true sign of our faith. We will follow Jesus anywhere. Follow, follow, I will follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere. I will follow on. You see, when we cry out to God and want our lives to change, Christ transforms us from losers into believers, from the rejected to one of his children. When this happens, the evidence that we are no longer losers, losers is this. We want to follow after Jesus. So follow, follow on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for the day and thank you for this story about Bartimaeus. I pray, God, that it will touch people's lives and people will see that, God, you don't want us to be losers, but you have a purpose and a plan for us. Thank you so much again for who you are. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great, great day.